All right, hey guys, uh, I got a feeling uh, this one's gonna be tricky to keep on uh, in view, and I apologize ahead of time for that. So, a uh, viewer reached out to me and asked if I wanted to check out a uh, plate frame. And I was like, heck yeah. Uh, the only plate frame I have any experience with, uh, especially in person, is the Hunger Games plate frame, which isn't bad, but it's uh, it's pretty clearly not the full capability of SNS Precision. Uh, so when he said that, I was like, yep, let's let's do it. I'd love to. And uh, he told me it was the, the plate frame redo, and uh, it didn't mean anything to me at the time. I didn't know what it was. I didn't realize how many different plate frames SNS Precision sells. Uh, but either way, I was excited. I got it and uh, checked it out on the website to try to get it all put together and everything. And um, it's like their, I don't want to say budget option, because they don't really make anything budget friendly. Uh, but I think it retails at four hundred dollars. I, I looked and and I should have gone back and checked. So I apologize. Uh, there are some things on here that are not stock. I'll try to go through that uh, without messing up his setup too much as we go through. So uh, the plate frame redo from SNS Precision. Uh, he asked me if I had swimmer cut plates. I said yes, I do. Uh, so he didn't send me uh, armor. Put mine in there. The fit. I think it's the right fit. Um, I might have slightly different sized. Uh, swimmer cut. Um, but I actually was so excited about this when I got it and tried it and was messing around with it. I went to the website to look at building one for myself or buying one and, and you know, all the pieces and whatnot. I didn't build anything. Uh, and there's lots of options for uh, plate cut. So you can get sappy cut versions, swimmer cut, all the different sizes. Uh, I think they ha even have some more obscure cuts. So you can do that for sure. Uh, so you're not restricted just to swimmer cut plates, which is uh, exciting because it kind of opens it up to more people, All right? Um, so some of the pieces that are not stock on here, so there's this rapid attach uh, half panel. We'll take that off as we go through so that you guys can see how that works. I just, I got it together and I didn't want to mess anything up. Uh, and then there's load bearing wings. So they come in pairs. Uh, you can't see the other one here, but there's two there. I'll show you how those attach. There's no directions on those. So I was a little confused. I might've done it wrong. Uh, this goofy pocket over here, I didn't realize what it was at first until I went and started playing around on the website to see what I might want. It's actually a holster, uh, and it's kind of interesting. I don't necessarily know that I'm a fan of it, but I, I do like what they did with it. Uh, it's a neat way of doing a holster. Uh, it's not weapon light friendly, so that kind of kills the appeal to me. Uh, but if you don't want a weapon light, it's, it's an interesting setup. Uh, the shoulder pads here are obviously not stock. Those are uh, core ice vents. And then the hydration system doesn't come with it. Um, looking internal, this uh, pad does not come with it. Uh, it's like a $25 add-on, which is a crazy good deal from uh, SNS Precision. Uh, it actually helps out a lot. It's This thing is crazy comfortable for what it is. That was kind of the my biggest drawback when I would look at plate frames is they don't look comfortable uh, at all. This one is actually surprisingly comfortable, which is what led me to go see... Uh, what getting into one of these would entail. Um, and then there's a, a pouch on the back here. That's obviously not a stock item. Um, I don't know. Sorry about that. I don't know who makes that pouch. I don't recognize the logo. It might actually be one of the SNS Precision pouches, like their watershed line. I'm not sure. Interesting little bladder pocket there. And then I think this is the Spiritus um, like flag thing. I'm not sure. But that's obviously not stock as well. Um, so, you know, kind of keeping in mind what's not stock should be fairly obvious. Uh, when you go on the website, you pick your plate size, and then they ask you to pick your cummerbund size. The cummerbund sizing is done by channels. So this is a six-channel cummerbund. Um, sorry, these are also not stock. These are the, the axle um, cummerbund or uh, placard adapter things. Uh, so you pick how many columns you want on your cummerbund, and that's like your general sizing. And then it does have a, a rapid adjustment inside of this wrap, which I'll show you as we go through it. So uh, that's kind of one of the other reasons I didn't jump on it. One, I'm not totally sold on wanting to drop that much money right now on a plate carrier, um, but I'm also not sure how to kind of game the sizing uh because I'd, I like to have the capability to use side armor. Um, and I'm not, I'm not sure how I feel about that on here, what, what that would add to the sizing and whatnot. This fits me as is uh, pretty well, 
but that's without uh, internal radios too. So sizing is a little up in the air. I'd have to do some, some more calculation on that, if you will. All right, uh, so looking at, at how this thing works, right? The cummerbund is really the most interesting part of the, the plate carrier itself, uh, but the accessories are also kind of cool. And uh, once you're into the, the initial cost of the system, the accessories aren't terribly bad, especially with respect to uh, SNS precision pricing. So we'll start kind of taking this apart piece by piece and see what we get to. Also, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, I do believe this is their Toad Vine colorway. Uh, it's Ranger Green, churched up a little bit, um, but they have kind of the basics. They've got black, coyote, Toad Vine, and then multi-cam for color options, which is another reason why I'm not totally sold. Uh, I've got all of those colorways covered. I don't necessarily need a new plate carrier. Uh, so if they had some spicy color option that was unique, maybe I'd be more inclined. All right. Uh, so we'll start taking this apart. So this rapid attach panel is uh, kind of the the SNS Precision uh, attempt at a placard, right? <clears throat> so we free up the bottom here. Uh, you will see the, the side release buckles, those are not stock. So this kind of mimics what you could get out of a placard. Uh, and then there are some side Velcro panels here. You know, SNS is kind of known for their, their Velcro origami when you're putting this stuff together, uh, which is why these pads come into play so much. All right. So we got bottom Velcro, side Velcro undone. You can see we really didn't have to mess with too much to make that happen. Uh, the only thing that might potentially be in your way is if you had some comms routing going through the laser cut molly. <coughs> that could slow you down a lot. Uh, so the last thing here is these Tegris tabs. Just slide out um, right there. They've got some Velcro that could potentially engage with something inside. I didn't have it hooked up to anything. I don't know if that would be the, the plate socks, which I don't have, but maybe that's where that Velcro would engage. But the Tegris is there for kind of the strength of the system, and then all the Velcro keeps it in place. So just that fast, we could have swapped from 556 to 762 or, you know, a, a not ammo setup, whatever's going on. You know, or we had ammo, maybe we don't need it, we just ditch the panel, and now we've got a slick front. All right, so that is how we get the uh, the rapid attach panel off. Uh, next up, I think we'll take these uh, load-bearing wings off so that we can see how that works. Um, these are the most confusing part, in my opinion. Uh, SNS has directions for some of their stuff, but they did not for these. So let's see if I can keep this on camera effectively. All right. <clears throat> I think that'll work. So again, you kind of use the pads to clean up all of the different Velcro layers going on. So we'll take that off. And then you can see we've got our two uh, load bearing panels here. They are separate, but they are sold in pairs. Uh, and I think that gives you the flexibility so that they're uh, one size fits all as far as plates go. Uh, so you can move them out as needed. You can't really uh, as, at least as far as I understand it, adjust the spread um, within the same plate size. Like this is where they're going to be on this particular plate carrier. If you stepped up in size, they would be in the same spot, just spread out a little bit more on that plate. You can't, you can't get more spread on the same size plate if that's something that you want. Uh, so these Velcro tabs here uh, connect the two panels together. And then they've got these kind of chunkier pads here, which engage with the inside of the plate carrier. The last piece that engages with the plate carrier is this Tegris tab here, which goes into this elastic piece. That's kind of the one part that I'm really guessing on when I assemble these. I think I found one picture on the internet that showed that, and the, that was it uh, as far as how to assemble this and, and install it. So I'm assuming that's what the tab engages, and that's kind of why you can't really adjust sizing. Like, it's just there. And then that's where your molly is. It does clear the plate, but only just barely. Uh, if I had, you know, if I had the power to make things happen, uh, I would push this molly out at least another half inch, I think, just to really clear that plate better. All right. Uh, since we're here, we'll look at this holster. Again, it took me a little while to figure out what this thing was uh, because it's very flat. I was like, what in the world would even fit in there? And then the, the offset bungee was throwing me off. And uh, there was this goofy Tegris piece in the box. 
Uh, so what that thing is, if you can see in here, there's almost like columns of molly. Uh, so you have three areas where you can drop that piece in there. And uh, I will hopefully get it out here in just a minute to show you how it fits in there. Uh, but that is kind of your trigger guard, uh, if you will. So uh, the way this works, we've got that offset here uh, to the left right now. Uh, so when we take our uh, Glock and insert it into the pocket, the trigger guard catches on that Tegris piece and then your barrel and the rest of the slide fits down beside it. Uh, I don't know how big of a warm and fuzzy I get. Like there's the trigger uh, just kind of hanging out. Uh, the bungee's on the wrong side, so forgive me. It should route that over the top of the slide uh, and you can kind of see how that would function there. Again, uh, I don't know. That's not the safest holster ever made. Uh, but it is a holster, and if you have a pistol with a safety, I'd feel much more inclined to use that. Uh, but again, it's not weapon light friendly, so kind of not, not my jam uh, from the get-go. Uh, but as far as this Tigris piece, it may or may not cooperate with me getting it out here. All right, so there's half of it out. And the other half, maybe. There we go. So that's how your Tigris piece is shaped. Uh, so those little teeth, they slide into the molly channel there, and then when they get to the top, they kind of spread out and they keep it from popping back out. Uh, kind of interesting. I don't know. Again, it's, it's just an S precision. Somebody asked for it, uh, not necessarily myself. So we will just uh, plop this back in here so I don't lose it before I send it back to this guy. All right, uh, so yeah, as far as the load bearing panels go, fairly affordable. I think these are $30 a pair, somewhere close to that. Uh, you can see it's all Tegris with some Velcro on it. Uh, you get two of them and uh, you can use these front and back of the plate carrier. Um, I don't necessarily know what I would wanna put in the back, um, but you've got the option, right? The, uh, the foam backers here, are fairly minimal as far as their padding ability goes, but they do kind of cover all of the Velcro connections inside there, which is nice uh, to have just to keep things cleaned up a little bit. And um, they work, they work really well. This thing was surprisingly comfortable. Uh, it's also very lightweight. So like, don't let this massive Velcro uh, concern you too much. The total plate carrier, you know, without plates, I think they mark it as being right at a pound. All right, so we'll take those out of the way, just uh, so you guys can see how the plates drop in here. All right, now I've got this kind of contorted with the shoulder strap, so it might not uh, give you the best view here. Uh, but you've got this crisscross coming around the, the angle of the plate, and then you've got a flap coming over the top. So you undo those two. And then you undo your flap here and that frees up the plate to either drop in or come out of the the pocket uh, but it's a little a little wonky so this flap is on the front of the plate bag and uh, this is the inside of the plate bag and then you've got this elastic band that runs around so it's fairly secure in there um, it's just kind of like a like a burrito holding the plate in there and when you flip the the plate carrier inside out it gets a little wonky uh, so I don't want to take that take that all the way out just yet and uh, kind of lose the structure to show you guys the rest of this thing. All right, uh, the plate, the cummerbund attaches with these uh, buckles that I'm not overly familiar with on the front of the plate carrier here. I don't know if that's a an SNS in-house contracted buckle or whatnot. Uh, but it snaps in there. It's got a nice audible click when it's there. You know it's secured. And then it's just a simple push to, to free it. Uh, so they work pretty well. And uh, that that button is fairly recessed in there. Like, I don't think you'd have too many concerns with that uh, pressing itself, you know, with your, with your rifle or some other piece of kit or something. Uh, and then when we look at how the cummerbund attaches here, pretty slick. They've got this, it's not a very big piece of Tegris, but it's sewn into the corner of the plate bag here and riveted there. Uh, and then that's just kind of like a, a wing on there 
uh, so it keeps your angle kind of fixed. You don't necessarily have the most control over what the, uh, the cummerbund is doing, uh, but there it is. And then for sizing, let's see here, oh, I messed this up too much here. Uh, you've got this sleeve with the molly on it that kind of conceals everything, so we'll open that up. Very good Velcro continuity. I remember chewing up my fingers a good bit working on this. All right, so we open up that Velcro there, and that kind of frees our sleeve, although it is still, you've got these, these tabs on the end here, hopefully that's still in view, that kind of fits between that channel there, so that's what's holding our, uh, our cummerbund on there. And you know, now that I look at it, I don't know if the, um, I don't know if the cummerbund itself changes sizes as you, uh, as you go through the different options on the website, it might only be the fabric panel. Uh, but I'd have to check on that. I really don't know. I didn't think the, I didn't even think about that. Cause I looked at how this all went together. And then a couple days later, I went on the website to kind of piece it out. And, uh, I had kind of forgotten how this looks at the time. So what you've got with this big old mess of Tegris and shot cord and rivets and everything that's concealed under here is you have the shot cord with this kind of Tegris tensioner there. So if we pull this all the way out, so we have all the slack possible, and then we, we bring that on to the inside here, you can see that we can actually pull that cummerbund all that distance. So when I'm looking at that, I think that if you, if, if you got the wrong size cummerbund, right? Worst case, you could probably still fit over soft armor and uh, a radio, maybe not both at the same time, and and still have it secured. Uh, you would just miss out on some molly channels on the uh, the outer face. So hopefully that's that's coming through, and you guys can see how that's working. All right, uh, you've got kind of this. Man, there's a there's a lot going on here. It's just not going to show up very well. Uh, but there's a whole mess of shot cord to keep tension there. And then there's like a, almost like Tegris rails that the cummerbund slides on and uh, helps you with the adjustment. So you can see as we, as we take tension or make tension in it, the whole fabric portion slides towards the front of the vest. So you're really just losing uh, Molly on the back, which isn't a crazy big deal. All right. Now that I have thoroughly messed up the sizing on this guy's cummerbund, we will uh, secure this back up. But there you have it. That is the uh, the SNS Precision Plate Frame Redo. Uh, it is a little bit different than uh, kind of what you think of when you look at a pl uh, plate frame because the the frame itself is all fabric as opposed to kind of the Kydex type material that, that I think we normally think of when we think of uh, plate frames. I don't think that's a, a loss though, right? Like you still have, you still have Molly. Uh, it's quieter. It's, a, it's an inherently a quieter vest. Uh, the Cumberbund is definitely unique. Um, it is, it does get a little bulky up here right around the buckle. Like that might be a concern uh, as you're, you know, going over top of radios or something, but it's a structured cummerbund. Like this thing functionally is very similar to an SPC or a, uh, a Faro with the, the Tegris cummerbund. These buckles are relatively fixed. Like when we attach this here, there's not a ton of movement there, especially with that, that Tegris wing on the back, like, it's staying where it's supposed to. So you could load down the cummerbund. It's not going to sag. It, it definitely takes some weight off of the shoulders. Granted, it has the, the core ice vents on there, uh, but I didn't notice any issues with comfort in the shoulder. It looks like it's kind of a cry style attachment here. Um, I, I'm sorry, I neglected to show you guys how the shoulder straps go together, but it's, uh, it's just two straps with uh, Velcro marrying it up underneath of this uh, wrap here. The wrap is stock. Um, so you just, you know, find where you want your, your shoulder straps, push the wrap one direction or the other to keep it out of the way, marry up your shoulder straps and then pull it back over. So there's a good bit of sizing available there. Uh, this one, I, I put it on and it was already at the correct height. So I didn't, I didn't worry about that too much. 
Uh, neither of them are adjustable at all, which is totally fine in my boat. Um, not something that I really look for. And you do have a, a drag handle on the back, uh, if you want to call it that. It seems it's stitched into the, uh, the rear panel here pretty well. Uh, but drag handles are always kind of hit or miss as far as will the stitching hold or not, because that's a pretty big dynamic load that you're going to put on it. Um, so quick release ability of this. Uh, you can pop the cummerbund real easy. Getting the shoulder straps off might be a challenge, but you've got a good, good clean shot there with a seatbelt cutter or something if you really needed to get this off of somebody. Um, it's an interesting, interesting thing. It's definitely one of the more affordable options that SNS Precision has, uh, starting at 400, uh, with fairly priced accessories. I think the the half panel here might be $40. Uh, your pads, I think, are 25 for the whole set, and then uh, your your load carriage wings are 25 or 30 for a pair. The holster, I don't know how much that costs. Um, their pouches are exuberantly expensive so i'm not i'm not too worried about that um you know it's molly compatible you don't have to stick with proprietary uh sns precision stuff so you can definitely explore other molly options but yeah there you go it is it is very comfortable very lightweight it's structured which is a win uh molly compatible kind of placard compatible aftermarket for sure is uh granted you don't have the velcro there uh, which is probably why this guy has the uh, the axle uh, side buckle adapters on there. But appreciate your time, guys. Hopefully I didn't ramble too much. Uh, it's kind of difficult to, to piece some of this stuff together live for you. But hopefully showed you how it works and, and answered some questions since SNS doesn't have the best uh, informational material on the website. It's pretty bare if you're asking me. So if you're spending $1,200 on the, the high-end plate frame, just, you know, you may have to figure out how to assemble it on your own. All right. Thanks, guys.